Good morning and welcome to the First Missionary Baptist Church of Fernandina Beach, Florida. We are the church in the heart of the city with the desire to be in the hearts of all people. Well, our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Darian K. Bolden Sr. And on the behalf of all the officers and members, we would like to take this opportunity now just to say you're welcome. And we would like to say to all of our returning family members, welcome home. Are you a first time guest worshiping with us here at the First Church? Well, we ask that you pull out your phones now and send a text message to the number 81010 and in the message bar type at FMBC visit so that we may stay connected with you. And we pray this is not your last time worshiping with us. Once again, you're welcome. Attention all ladies, don't forget that the women of Union St. James are in prayer every Monday morning at 6 o'clock a.m. to 6.15 a.m. Now, weekly prayer call information can be found on your weekly bulletin by scanning the QR code placed in front of you or by going to our church website, fmbcfernadina.com. Have you been blessed in our midweek worship experience? Well, join us this Wednesday at 12 noon for a recap of last week's Wednesdays in the Word on our YouTube channel. And then join us here at 6 o'clock p.m. for a new edition of our Wednesdays in the Word worship experience. And don't forget your homework is to read ahead in our five practices of a fruitful congregation book. We look forward to seeing you Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. We are excited about being a blessing to our community this Friday for our first monthly feeding. For more information, please contact Sister Corliss Brown or Sister Prudencia Ville. It's that time of year again where we are trying to be a blessing not only to our young people, but to all of those who may be attending our Resurrection Day service. You may donate your candy, your pre-colored and pre-boiled as well as plastic eggs to Sister Sean Hubbard or Reverend Darian Bolden Jr. Uh, boxes are places, placed in the vestibule, and we ask that all donations please, give it, please be given by Sunday, March 24th. First Missionary, we will be worshiping with the First African Baptist Church on Sunday, March 24th at 3 o'clock p.m. We're asking that all of our ushers, our choir members, all of our members load up the bus as we make our way to Georgia. This is our first official outing of the year, and we look forward to showing up in great numbers. We ask that you continue to keep the family of Mr. Kenneth Scott, who is the brother of Deacon Willie Scott, in prayer as the memorial service will be held on Saturday, March 23rd at 11 o'clock a.m. at the 3rd Mount Zion Baptist Church in O'Neill, Florida. Our CSI Bible classes are still happening every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. next door in our fellowship hall. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday as we continue to go together in God's word. Our FMBC Food Pantry is also still up and running. If you have any items you'd like to donate, please contact Sister Gwen Kane for more information. Are you staying up to date with us through the latest technology here at the First Church? We'll send a text message to 81010 and then the message bar type at FMBCAN to receive the latest announcements right to your phone. Well, we thank you for joining us here at the First Church, and we pray this is not your last time worshiping with us. Remember, the First Church comes together every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and 1015, Wednesdays at noon and 6 o'clock, and there are so many ways you can stay up to date with us through our social media pages. Remember, it's not what happens between these four walls here at First Missionary, but it's what happens outside of them. So be sure to take the First Church with you wherever you go. Have a blessed week, First Missionary. So now let's all stand to our feet and make some noise for the greatest pastor on this side of heaven, the Reverend Dr. Darian K. Bolden Sr. This is the day that the Lord has made. Mm -hmm. Most certainly, we ought to rejoice and we ought to be glad in it. As a matter of fact, that God is the only person who can make a day. And the fact that he took the time to include us in his day. I think that's praiseworthy. Amen. As a matter of fact, that God thought enough of us. There were some folk who lived better, amen, uh, by nature, than some of us lived by practice, whose tongues were cleaving to the roots of their mouths this morning. But he thought it not around to allow moving moments to roll on just a little while longer. We ask you to, tonight, bow your heads. Word of prayer as we welcome you to the historic First Missionary Baptist Church in front of Nina Beach, Florida, the church in the heart of the city with the design to be in the hearts of all people. It's located at 20 South 9th Street, Front of Nina Beach, Florida, 32034. Let us bow our heads. Our Father and our God, we thank you tonight. We thank you once again for allowing us another opportunity to make it to the house of prayer and the house of worship. Oh God, we've come to lift you, we've come yes. to magnify you, but most of all, God, tonight we've come to learn more about your word, your will, and your way for our lives. Something, oh God, that will make us better stewards of what you have entrusted to our care. 
And so God, we ask that you would bless everyone tonight who is watching by way of the cyber sanctuary, those who have thought it not wrong to make it to the physical sanctuary, and those who may be on the way. We ask, oh God, that you would bless tonight and unravel your mysteries to us. Make it clear, make it plain, speak through us tonight, that we may, oh God, bless someone with the word from on high and give instructions on how we ought to worship you. It's in your name we pray tonight, thanking you in advance for what you're going to say and what you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Often, brothers and sisters, we say God bless you. God keep you in our prayer. Thank you for joining us, whether you're here physically or whether you're here watching through the Simon Sanctuary. We're just glad that you tuned in to the Historic First Church of Fernandina Beach, Florida. Tonight, we want to continue, amen, our series on worship. I want to elaborate a little more tonight on worship. Thank everyone last week for their homework assignments. Amen. amen. I, as I perused through the papers, amen, I, I saw some interesting, uh, very interesting comments as it relates to how we feel about worship and what we think worship is. Amen. One of the things I also saw is that we are going to spread just a few more time, a little more time these next couple of weeks on worship with the defining of worship. Because sometimes we can get praise and we can get worship mixed up. Amen. And uh, even though they are kissing cousins, amen, they're not identical twins. Amen. Now, uh, I believe that both all the compass are little bit of each. Amen. Uh, when you praise, you ought to praise with the spirit of worship. And when you worship, you ought to worship, amen, with the spirit of praise. Amen. But there is uh, some, some little differences there in what we call worship. And tonight in your book, we want to pick up, and I won't stay a long time tonight in this particular book. Uh, the Lord arrested my attention because, of course, you know, I teach the first three nights of every week. Uh, I teach Monday and Tuesday seminary, and I teach uh, on Wednesdays here. It's amazing. Uh, there is an amazing book uh, that's really comprised of about eight <coughs> books uh, by uh, uh, Tony Evans. And it is one of the sources that I'm using as I'm teaching this semester uh, systematic theology. I'm teaching systematic theology. And there is a book that's written by Tony Evans that's entitled Theology You Can Count On. Theology You Can Count On. And we're in uh, the sixth part of the book. Uh, and uh, in that part of chapter 77, I believe it is, it talks about worship. And uh, I'm going to transition over to that uh, shortly into the text tonight because I want to deal with some things. But tonight in uh, the book that we're studying for this particular series, The Five Practices of Fruitful Congregations, Tonight, uh, as we're still in passionate worship, I want to deal with worship shaped by the context. Worship shaped by the context. And uh, uh, you had a homework assignment, amen, last week. Amen. Uh, now, now, this is the Lord's house, amen, whether we were here or not, uh, and you were assigned that assignment, Amen. Uh, the Lord knows whether you did your homework. Pastor went there. Amen. But the Lord knows. Amen. So, I mean, you did your homework, didn't you? Amen. Some say no. Some, some, won't, some walked in tonight. Uh, I knew they hadn't done it because they were wondering what it was. Uh, amen. But, uh, uh, we want to give homework again tonight. Uh, the writer says, Mary Whitaker, 
name, but when I first read this, and I read this a few weeks ago, I was somewhat, saw that name, uh, I, I knew of Mary Whitaker. One of my best friends, his mom's name is Mary Whitaker, which is M-A-R-Y, uh, was assigned to the Canterbury chapter in the Oklahoma Indian Missionary Conference. The congregation had dwindled to a small, older group of highly committed women. They worked and they prayed for some way to reach others with the good news of Christ. Immersing herself in the community, the pastor came to realize the dramatic need for the 12-step support groups that's based on Alcoholic Anonymous recovery model. The congregation decided to take a risk. So they're, they, here's what they did, they adapted their worship to complement and to support that 12-step program by AA. They, they adapted, that's what they did, they, they adapted uh, their worship to complement that 12-step that program. And so worship became a peaceful, a powerful center for testimony. It became a powerful center for decision, support, and transformation. Few congregations, my brothers and sisters, are as acutely aware of the life-transforming power of worship as Canterbury Chapel. Well, what, what, what arrested me here also is uh, what the writer says. They adapt, right? Um, I was a younger guy, and uh, as a younger guy, I was a fan of Clint Eastwood, right? Dirty Harry and, and things of that nature. I was a fan. I, uh, when I come older and got more familiar with some of his beliefs and practices and political views, I dropped him like he was a hot kid. Uh, nonetheless, there, there's a movie that Clint Eastwood had out some years ago, and in that particular movie, he says you have to adapt, he says you have to improvise, and then he says you have to overcome. Y'all thinking that this right, I guess we don't have no Clint Eastwood in here. He says you have to, have to adapt, improvise, and overcome, right? And, and so, here it is. Why is it sometimes, and I've I wondered for, the, for many years, why is it that we're so open sometimes for change everywhere but the church? <laughs> we're open for change. Everywhere except the church. So, I think it's, maybe because we feel like in our lives there has to be some constant, something that doesn't change. And in our viewpoint, is the church has always been something that was specific. It was always what it was. And and then we I agree. You see where I'm going? I, I hear what you're saying. No, I don't see where you're going, but I hear what you're saying. Because the biggest problem is, that's the reason we don't change. But let me finish. Go ahead, go ahead. Because, but let me just share this, because I don't want to lose the point of interest. Because the biggest reason we don't change is because we don't change. 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 Because we don't But let me ask this question. Why did they crucify Jesus? To fulfill the 
Now, they killed Jesus, right? That's the fulfillment of what was already prophesied, but they killed him because he came with change. Jesus had to ask crazy questions. Is it easier for me to say to this man, your sins are forgiven, or for me to say, take up your bed and walk? Because, and then they had to testify, we never saw it on this fashion. They had a problem with change. Only on certain things. We used to do communion. Churches used to do communion. We still have the base in the Bible, but the basin is broken. Years ago, in churches, they would fill up that basin and that base with water. The basin would be up. Deacons would come, hold their hands over, and then put on some white gloves like they were serving. And, and, uh, and I would jump on that because that particular practice was a change. We wasn't always doing that. And then somebody came in and said, let's do it. Then we started doing it, but it was a change. And, and as it relates, though, we come at the table. Why? We couldn't, we couldn't explain that. Let me teach you for, for a few minutes. Let's do a few minutes. We couldn't explain that. Why we come? Back in the days, nets, flies, everything got in. You in churches now where organ people come. You don't see the next slide. You in the air conditioning. You can't let the women go. <laughs> but we are. We be in contrast to, oh, we always did it like this. But we don't. What? Look, the reason I ask that question. This is the reason I ask that question. Because Mr. Charlie changed all the time. And if you're going to pay your bills, if you're going to have some insurance, if you're going to have a life and some money in your pocket, you're going to adapt to Mr. Charlie's change. That's if you're working or not working. Because the government has changed. Amen, somebody. They ushered in a preacher preached in the late 70s. He preached a sermon, uh, a famous, well known sermon, and the title of that message was The Robots Are Coming. Yeah. Folks thought he was crazy. <laughs> and he was talking about computers. Amen. 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 That was a time you could do a lot of stuff on the good old boy system. Amen. Amen. That's right. My mama grew up in Uly, born February 25th, 1927. And everybody knew Reuben Davis Sr. Amen. They called him Old Man Bill. Yeah. Amen. You could go to the store and get something on Bill's night. You could go in different places and they didn't ask for ID because they knew who you were. Those days are gone. It didn't take you two hours to get through the airport. Even with the TSA pretext. But times have changed. And they talk about gold green. Anybody in here got a TSA pretext? Huh? You got one? What is your, what is, what is, they don't call it to come move up, oh, I got a TSA no. What is it called? Non-traveler. KTN. No travelers, no. They don't give you a car. They don't give you anything. They send you an email. 
with your number. That's all they do. And when you book your flight, you have to know. You have to impute your number when you book your flight. And you have up until the day of your flight to go back if you forgot to do it, but the day of the flight is too late. Get in the regular line. You buy it right. There's so many people with the KTN, it's just an outside. The writer says, 100 years ago, churches had three generations. They were all present in worship. All three generations. They all speak the same language. They all share the same culture. They all grew up with the same stories. They all enjoyed the same music. And he says today, churches have four more generations. And each one has their own way of communicating. It's distinctive taste in music. It's all language and culture. <coughs> and I'm not against, I'm, I'm 100% not opposed to children's church. But some of our children don't know how to act in church. Because they never in church. They somewhere where they, they that's the reason they don't know how to act in regular church when they become adolescents and teenagers is because they have spent all this time over there playing. And they no longer have an attention span for regular church. Because they've been watching it on video. They've been on a computer. They've been doing it such a different way until traditional worship is just thrown away from it's, There is no interest in it. And they don't know how to sit in church. Because parents are not like they used to be. And I have to sometimes get on youth leaders here. Because kids up in the choir say, no, when you six, seven, eight years old, I'm not sleeping and laying down on the pew. Those days are over. And it didn't kill us. I don't care what you say tonight. It didn't kill us. To sit up in church and pay attention. That's the reason they can't pay attention in school. Amen. That's the reason third grade right now is the worst grade in school as it relates to the progress of the student. Amen. Because half of them can't get past Amen. third grade. Amen. And they can't read on the third grade they know. And they're eight years old. Amen. Some of them were almost doomed in nail. No oh, ma'am. Because I know I'm an old teacher. The children are learning from the computer now. I was speaking to my grandbaby the other day, I think I've spoken to all of you, and I was asking them about that with the children. To me, it's like they're teaching themselves. And my thing about church is this. A lot of times, the message is over the children's head. I've read that there have been some preachers, if they don't have a children's church, before he starts preaching to the congregation, they have brought the children up front, and then the, the, the pastor has explained to the children what he's going to be talking about and put it on the level that the children can understand. I agree. Dr. Moody said that, Dion Moody says, you have to put, he said he lowered the shelves where he put the cookies where the kids can go. That's true. But right, that's also true with the influence of what you said about the church and the school is that charity begins at home. Yes, it does. 
The church ought not be the first place where kids hear about Christ. But the problem is we have unchurched generations that have come along. And so I agree when you said you can't put all the blame on kids. No. Because uh, your age group, my age group, we have to take part in the blame. Because we didn't raise our children like we were raised. Because of prosperity. That's what has happened. So they have this thing called choice. Of whether or not they want to go. We didn't have choice. Of whether or not we wanted to go to church. And so, yes, we didn't have all. See, as, as people, a lot, of, a lot of stuff have heard of. There are no black-owned federal banks, savings and loans, uh, state in, 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 in our state. All of the modern park grocery stores are gone. Arabs own everything. You go in the kitchen, you go, you go get gas. That's who owns the store. They selling everything in there to hurt our people. Right behind the counter. Yeah, right. Vapes. Everything in the store. You walk in there, whatever it is you want to get, it's right there. And it's high. And they ain't and they put nothing back in that community. And they barely put anything back in the store. It's got a stint. They don't know the last time. You look at the woman, they don't know the last time. The woman been clean. And they, they in all our communities. Amen. And we patronize them. Float over like they've been walked on a regular basis. But here's a, a church that the leaders adapt. Right? It says, listen, if we got everyone in the same room with so many varying tastes, we cannot assume everyone will stay. But we can open the door to other opportunities for alternative expressions of worship in other settings. Faith communities must be willing, must be, here it is, willing to give permission to people to use the music and methods that offer authentic and compelling worship even for younger generations. I didn't see it like my pastor saw it all the time coming up. There were some things, Sister Beverly, I thought my pastor was for you. Know, there were some things maybe he was. But as I've gotten older, my pastor had a problem off time with us singing songs that were not biblically sound. Biblically correct. You didn't have a problem if we changed the word to make it biblically correct. But God had a problem. That's not, that's, that's not correct. Brothers, listen to that. Sisters, listen to that. Listen to that lyrics. And we have a lot of songs in our, you know, we have, I don't know what, I don't, I, they're not, uh, what is it, CSM or something like that. It's not that. Uh, it, it, we, we have a lot of songs that they play on series. Excellent. That's child of 64. You pay for that. Right? You, you pay for that. Um, uh, Pandora Street. Right? And uh, I'd rather lose it sometime in Pandora. Because that, that serious stuff. I'd be riding down the street sometime and I'd be wondering if somebody changed my station. 
and I have to look down because there is no difference in the sound of that than if I would have it on 101.5 of the groove or uh, the r and channel on um, satellite. That, that, there's not too much, there's not too much difference. And I can, sometimes they be ringing in my ear that uh, first uh, one of my professors, Dr., the late Dr. W.L. Williams, says wherever there is a distinction, God makes a difference. Now, there are our music, our movements, our message. It can't be exactly like the world. Amen. And here it is, church. No matter what church you you're, you're a member of, if you're watching, brother pastor, we can't keep compromising. Just for the sake of saying we're trying to attract young people. Amen. Everything can't be a compromise. Amen. There are some things you ought to and some things you ought not allow. Amen. And I don't care what they're doing over there. Yeah, there's some things you can't compromise. Yeah, but there, there's some things, there's some things you can. But there's some things you can't. But as it relates to, but but at the church, sometimes you got to know what you can and what you can't. Right? In order, in order for us to remain in the church, everybody came. And watch this. But they, the book teaches us as we as we continue to grow in the Bible. Amen. Jesus came to promote change. Jesus, the same thing I've been trying to do the last several months with this series Amen. is work on our minds. Amen. The mindset Amen. to be open. To notice. Notice the word that keeps coming up. And it's not, watch this, it's just not a New Testament word. Amen. It's an Old Testament word. Amen. And that word is willing. Yeah, yeah. If, 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 now, watch, I told y'all about praise and worship, right? Now then, there are two other cousins that if they hook up, the church would go to a higher, a higher, higher. Two other cousins. Y'all ain't gonna make a change. Willing and able. If women and able could hook up. One writer said, the spirit is women, but the flesh ain't able. If women and able could hook up, right? Oh, no, but I'm not able. See, see, there's some folk whose testimony is true. They may not have that ability, but they're willing. But then on the flip side, there's some folk who have the ability. They have, I, can I preach like I feel? They have the ability, but they just ain't willing. Because ministry often requires more of us than what we're willing. Not, not what we ain't. Amen. Right, right, right. Amen. Because when God assigns ministry to your hand, he never assigns anything based on your ability. Amen. I can preach tonight. And I know I'm right because I got witnesses. Amen. Come in, Moses. Amen. And he turned.
tried to argue. He, he argued. Watch this. It's amazing how he uses his inability to argue about his availability. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A crash. Two fellows were riding in a truck one day, and both of them had a little that Moses syndrome. Got to a, a blind, a blind curl, curve, curve. The other one looked. Anything coming? Got pulled out, bam! He said, put, put, put that truck <laughs> Moses is trying to argue with God. God said, no, man, listen. I know your inability and your insufficiencies and your deficiencies before I chose you. That's a word for somebody in here tonight. Listen. <coughs> you know, you know, a lot of times in our prayers, because we heard it so long. You need to get that. We heard the old deacons praying, and then we heard the old preacher praying. And and so we use it and adopt it in our way of talking to the Lord. If you find anything in us that shouldn't be. Like, like, like the Lord have to be Sherlock Holmes. Y'all <laughs> don't have to search us to find something that, that all that beauty. There's something in each of us that ought not be. Right? So, so he says, here it is. Faith communities have to be willing. And if the people with the greatest influence and resources only support, here, here's what I talk about all the time, worship that supports their own taste then the church fails in its mission. Amen. I'll give to it if I like the idea. I'll support it. But if I ain't really crazy about the idea, if I don't, I don't think it's something we ought to do, I ain't put no type of support behind it. Whether it's physical labels, whether it's posting it, Sharing it or financing it. I was just saying, I don't think we ought to do it. But, but I don't, I don't. I'm, I'm talk, talking, I'm talking to some of the people watching it. Nobody out. <laughs> right. Today, my idea. Y'all ain't doing my ideas, but I ain't doing my ideas. No, no, no idea. Or maybe your idea didn't line up with the vision. Amen. So here it is. He says, there are times when you go to churches and you learn a lot about the church now. Sometimes they're sitting and they're observing, right? And all of us have been to some church, 
seem like folk don't have it together. Right? Worship 
means a church cares enough about the service to offer its best, its utmost every time. Sometimes folk have asked, Reverend, you've been that many folk. You went busy and that wasn't no big church. I wasn't a no major church. And, uh, what you mean it wasn't a major church? What do you measure the major church talk? You do you measure the major church off of its finance budget? Do you measure a major church off of its tapestry? Do you measure a major church because it got beautiful chandeliers, carpeted flow, and carpeted seats? Air blowing out of here? Or the pastor got docked in front of his name? Or because the edifice is real big and large? Is that what you call a major church? Because every pew full? So you mean to tell me I only pastor 10 people? And several of them show up regularly. Amen. Other three in my age, the church I found to not make. Amen. This is good. Jesus only had 12. Amen. Amen. And he picked them. Yeah. And one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. How do you measure a baby church? You get you preach just all that. The, the little place that you do the big church. Why? What, did, you, did you think that ought to be a difference? Oh, I, what I'm supposed to do? Ask the pastor what the honorary is, why you're there's an honorary, and then I preach based on honorary? Idea of putting Paul in the basket to let him down. 
What if, what if the person who had made the basket had only made the basket good enough to hold groceries and not Paul? He said, what about the rope? What if the person who made the rope, what if they wouldn't have done their best? He said, what about the people who lowered him in, down over the wall, if they wouldn't have been put in the low? What would have happened if they had not done their best? Whatever you do for the Lord, you ought to let it be your best. You may not have the best voice, but sing your best. You may not be the best teacher, but teach your best. Study your best. You may not be the best usher, but stand your best. Whatever it is that you're doing, and you're doing for the Lord, you ought to do it with all that's within you. Not for show, not for form, but not for fashion. But the Bible says, add unto the Lord. I wish I had some help with you. Do your best. Passion in worship draws people to Christ and they afford people the opportunity to be shaped by God. Well, I, I looked at this, this thing called passion in worship. Um, I don't have time, but I wanted, I wanted to go over but, 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 and deal with this, but I, I, I am going to just pull an insert for a matter of what, what, what I talked about the, uh, last night that I, I did with it a little more uh, next week if the Lord says so, uh, about worship. Uh, People come together for celebration. Sometimes they celebrate family, they celebrate friends, right? Some folks who are having birthday, they're having anniversaries, they've gotten promotions, housewarmings, right? They, uh, you know, they, they, they come to honor and at these gatherings, we expect to hear the invited guest speak well of the person being honored. The host, uh, the hostess may even ask several guests to tell what the honorees mean to them or what they've done for them. Celebrating special people at special occasions is keeping with one of the primary definitions of the word celebrate. Now here's what the word celebrate means. It, it, the word celebrate, if you're right, that's this one, this is what celebrate means. Celebrate means to hold up for public acclaim. That's what celebrate means. Hold up for public acclaim. I really wish I had time for that. Hold up. So everybody say this with me. Just follow me in this. Hold up, Hold up. for public, for public acclaim. A-C-C-L-A-I-M. A -C -C -L -A -I -M. Public acclaim. Listen. What we just described when we're talking about celebrate is what the church is supposed to do when we come together as a body to worship our God and Jesus Christ being the head of the church. That's what we're supposed to do. Anybody wrote what I just asked you to write? Huh? Anybody wrote what, what did I just ask you to write? No, 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 no. Say it. Somebody say it again. A little loud. That's what we're supposed to do to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ when we come together as a body of Christ. When we gather for worship, it's good.
good to give thanks to the Lord and praise to his name. The elements of worship in a classic passage is found in Psalm 100, in which the psalmist calls us to worship. Right? Did anybody can quote Psalm 100? Send another dollar. We ain't gonna let you. We ain't gonna let you finish. Psalm 100. So, so I, I, I need to hear. We can't. We, the people and the people listening can't hear. Make a joyful sound to the Lord. Thank you. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Use outside voice. I can barely hear. The people, they hear. All right. Let's see. Make a joyful love unto the Lord. Huh? All your land. Yes. Right? Yes. Serve the Lord with what? Yes. Come before his presence with what? Yes. Huh? Yes. Come before his what? Yes. With what? Yes. It's, on, it's on the screen. <laughs> right? Yes. Next verse says what? No, no, no. Know ye. It's really saying you ought to know that the Lord he is God. It is He who has made us, and now we are ourselves. We are who? And the what? She. She. Of His pasture. We are His people. Sheep of His pasture. We ought to do what when we do that? Here's what He said. How? How? How we ought to come into the congregation with the saints. And then into his court high. We ought to do what? Unto him and do what? The rock, his name. For the Lord, what? His mercy is what? And his truth does what? I'm laughing because I've been listening to that Deacon Brown. I think he, he quoted it from the message at the NIV. And he made it all the same words. It means the same thing. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is, listen, Thanksgiving in the Bible is usually associated with worshiping God for what he's done. While blessing the Lord or praising him often speaks about who he is. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it helps us to see the various ways that we're to worship God. Ephesians 1, Paul gives us a great clue about what our worship should focus on. Paul rejoiced in the salvation God provided in Christ. And also he did it to the praise of the glory of his grace. You know, David, David and Paul, uh, two words that, that's also kissed because mercy, right? Grace. David talked more about what? What did David talk more about? Which one of those words David talked more about? I can't hear somebody in the back said something. Mm hmm? I can't hear you. If it, if it ain't right, I'm going, I ain't going to let you be with it not being right, but at least let us hear what you said. I said mercy because he needed it. Yeah. David talked more about mercy. Paul talk more about what? And don't we all need both of them? We need God's grace. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. Right? Unearned blessings, unbestowed benefits, yes, right. Yes, right. Uh, undeserved benefits and blessings, Amen. unmerited favor. Yes, we need mercy. Giving us a break when we don't deserve a break. Right? 
are not giving us what we actually deserve. That, that, that's, that's the reason all of us are here today, young and old. Because on yesterday, God did not give us fair payment. You mean to tell me God ain't fair? No. The way in the Bible you see where he's fair. And I'm so glad that he's unfair. Because his unfairness is always tilted in my faith. Had it been fair, I wouldn't be standing before you tonight. Had it been fair, you wouldn't be sitting in the pew. Because all of us sinned in one way or another on yesterday. I'm, I'm talking about yesterday. So we shouldn't have woke, awakened this morning. Because had we received fair payment for our sin, The death angel between midnight and 6 a.m. would have crept in our room. Would have called our name. But instead, crept in our room and touched us once again. And allowed us to see the breaking of a new day. Not because we deserve it. But because he didn't give us Amen. what we deserve. I'm out of here tonight. I'm done. I'm getting happy. Just off the fight that he didn't give me. That's how we were raised saying back in the day when we when folk didn't give us what we thought we deserved. We got folk today who raised saying. Because they don't get what they think they, they're entitled to. Right? But the good news is God doesn't give us always what we deserve. Wages of sin. But the gift of God. I'm saved. Not because I deserve it. But because of election. Hallelujah. I'm out of here tonight. I'm, I'm done. Praise his holy name. Amen. 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 Yes. I'm going to talk more about that in our, our next setting. I wish, wish I had time tonight. Amen. But I'm excited about the next setting, the next opportunity that the Lord gives us to to dive a little deeper into that because we're going to talk about magnifying him. Amen. You will care. Amen. So I'm going to ask that you pick up with no longer the most boring part of worship. Somebody asked that question in the game and it came in, are we here? No longer. That's where that's where that's where I want you to pick up reading. Right. I want you to read that and go all the way to the end of this chapter. Amen. Not a whole lot of reading. Amen. That's not that's not seven days worth of reading. I divided uh, that's a good that's a good good less than an hour almost if you just consistently read. You can be done with that in less than an hour. Amen. So if you read it 10 minutes a day till we come back, you ought to be done read that. Amen. Praise his holy, holy name. You don't have to be a speed reader to read it and read that. Amen. Good questions at the end, too, if you would, if you would take the time to look at those two approaches as well and uh, look at the questions. Amen. The heartbeat of life. It's a good thing to read. God bless you tonight. Any questions on that? Any questions on worship? 
I want to worship you. Give it your back. Listen, listen to me. Let me close this way tonight by saying, you can't worry about what other folks are going to think concerning your best. Amen. Amen. Only one person you have to be. It ain't your ministry leader. It ain't your pastor. Amen. It's not the person on the pew with you. Now the Lord knows. And you know. Get away from him, he understands. Because not only does he understand, he knows. Right? We, we use that lame excuse sometimes, he understand. Amen. Amen. Because he understands more than just on Sunday morning. Amen. When you say, I would go, but he understand. He understand Monday when you work in 12s. Amen. He understands Tuesdays when you work in 12s. He understands Wednesday when you work in 12s uh -huh. and you go to the boss and say, hey, if anybody call out this weekend, I'll take this shit. Yeah. He, he, he understands me. Amen. He understands. He understands when you don't give him your best. He understands you didn't give the best offer. He understands you didn't, and watch this, offering don't always include money. The Bible says, Paul says, I'm not ready to be offered. That, that, he said, I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering. Wait, listen. When Isaiah realized his shortness, he said, woe is me. I'm a man undone. I'm, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of unclean people. Uh, basically, he said, Lord, uh, anything you want me to do, use me. And what you ought to be, you ought to be thankful and grateful for if the Lord decides to use you. Because remember now, he can use anybody and he can use anything. But if it's a pleasure, it's a privilege to be used in God's service. Amen. I wish I had some help. Amen. Amen. Some of us are, don't do nothing in God's service. I said that someone I was sitting with just the other day, they, they kind of wondered what I said. And we were talking about church life. So when I grew up in church, and when I got 18, 19, you know how we did. We stopped going. We didn't want to say, I thought I'd remember how you did that. I ain't never been up there. I thought I'd do what you did. Yeah, I saw many others. You know? And I stopped doing this. I say, and that's what happens with a lot of folks. They spend their energy on fighting for the devil. And then, when they can't do nothing, they come blow the smoke of a wasted life in the face of God. They let the world use them up. Not that God don't want you when you're old, but He can show sure enough use you when you got an activity in your limbs. We want to burn the fire and the flame for the devil and blow the smoke in God's face. Go on, man. want to stay home when she look like something. She got right here. 
Hosea oh, had to go by the way. Now when she left home, she was worth it, Rocky Boy. I'm done, I'm done. I'm out of here, I'm done, I'm done. But when he had to go by the way, <laughs> she left home. She left home. Well, they probably wanted to do this, but she left home. But when they went and got a baby. I don't know. I Amen. But guess what? That takes it. That's, you just, you gotta understand. God needed a liaison yeah. until days, man, to let the world know how he felt. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. Yeah. In that, yeah. while we were yet yeah. in our worst state, yeah. God gave the best price yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. I went that way for a reason yeah. Yeah. to let you know that even in the worst state, God still thinks you worth something. How about it, man? I'm trying to get out of here the last two nights. I've been having a roster trying to get out, but I'm done. Amen. I'm done tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand. Yes. Yes. Perhaps there's one who's out in the ark tonight. Don't know Christ in the heart of your sin. Amen. You've heard a word tonight. Listen, even at your worst, God is willing to give his best. As we tonight extend this invitation, you're under the sound of my voice. You hear me going over the airwaves or whether you're in the sanctuary and you need to come. Tonight is the night because you can seek the Lord while he may be found. You can call upon him while he's yet not. Come to Jesus. Come. come to Jesus. If you're here tonight, you can come. come Is that a candidate for baptism, presence of the silence, no restoration? Jesus. If you're watching my way of the airways, you can just follow the prompts on the screen, and someone will immediately get back with you. Oh, Lord, he will save you. He will save you. watching my way to Simon Sanctuary. There are several ways you can give to our online giving system. Amen. We'll be blessed for every gift you leave tonight. God will greatly use it for his kingdom. And we thank you for tonight. Bless you. God bless you. As we depart, amen. Be safe as we leave tonight. And God's covering may his grace, his love abide with you till we leave again. Amen.